In this video, we're going to talk about how to solve a quadratic system of inequalities. So let's start with the first example. We have y is greater than x squared minus 4. So let's graph that. Now, the graph y equals x squared is basically a parabola that opens upward like this. x squared minus 4 is going to be a parabola that opens upward but shifts four units down. So it's going to look something like that. So the y-intercept is going to be right here. It's going to be at negative 4. Now, for this graph, what we can do is find the x-intercepts as well. If we set y equal to 0, and solve for x. What we have here is a difference of perfect squares. So to factor, it's going to be x plus 2, x minus 2. Solving for x, we can set each factor equal to 0 using the zero product property. And we'll get that x is equal to positive 2 and x is equal to negative 2. So those are the intercepts for that graph. So we have a point at 2 and negative 2. So the graph is going to open up like this. So I'm just going to draw a rough sketch. Now, because we're dealing with inequalities, notice that y is not equal to x squared minus 4, but it's greater than. So what we need to do when graphing it is we need to use dashed lines. But let me just graph this in a different color so you could see everything clearly. So that's how we can graph y is greater than x squared minus 4. Now, for the second quadratic function, I'm going to graph that one in blue. So we have y is less than or equal to negative x squared plus 2x plus 3. Because of the equal part, we're going to have, we're going to use a solid line as opposed to dashed lines. Now, before we graph it, let's go ahead and find the x-intercepts. So I'm going to set y equal to 0, and I'm going to try to factor this trinomial. First, I'm going to take out negative 1 from every term. So every term is going to change signs. So now we have a trinomial with a leading coefficient of 1. What we need to do is find two numbers that multiply to negative 3 but add to negative 2. So that's going to be negative 3 and positive 1. Negative 3 times 1 is negative 3, but negative 3 plus 1 adds up to negative 2. So to factor it, it's going to be x minus 3 times x plus 1. Using the zero product property, we're going to set each factor equal to 0. And we're going to solve for x. So adding 3 to both sides, we get x is equal to 3. Subtracting 1 from both sides, we get x is equal to negative 1. So the intercepts are negative 1 on the x-axis and positive 3. Now, the midpoint between 3 and negative 1 is positive 1. If you add up 3 and negative 1, and then you average it or divide by 2, you get 2 over 2, which is 1. So that's where the axis of symmetry will be. It's at x is equal to 1. The axis of symmetry will give us the x-coordinate of the vertex. For x squared minus 4, we didn't need to do that because the axis of symmetry was going to be at the origin, as we can see here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to find the coordinates of the vertex. So I'm going to plug in 1 into this equation.
So this is going to be negative 1 plus 2 plus 3. 2 plus 3 is 5 minus 1, that's 4. So the vertex is 1 comma 4, which is here. We could also find the y-intercept. If we replace x with 0 and calculate the value of y, we'll get the y-intercept, which is going to be 3. So we have another point, 0, comma, 3. Now, because these quadratic functions tend to be symmetrical, if we were to draw the axis of symmetry, because we have this point here, there's going to be another equal point here. It needs to be symmetrical along the line x equals 1. So we have a similar point, which is going to be 2, comma, 3. If you plug in 2 for x, you should get 3 for y. But this is enough to graph it. Now, because it's not just less than, but it's less than or equal to, we're going to use a solid line as opposed to a dashed line to graph it. So now, we need to know where to shade the solution. So notice that we have y is greater than x squared minus 4. So we're going to shade above that graph. And here we have y is less than or equal to this function. So we're going to shade below the blue graph. Now, the region in which we have basically both graphs shaded, is this part here. So this is where the solution lies, anywhere in this region. So let's use a different color. So this is going to be the answer. In this region, both inequalities will be true. So that's how you can solve a quadratic system of inequalities by graphing. Now, for those of you who want to access the rest of this video, feel free to check out the links in the description section below. We're going to go over how to graph this set of inequalities. As you can see, it's a little bit different. This time, x is on the left side instead of y. So feel free to check out those links in the description section below when you can.